The USFL has confirmed coaches that are returning for the 2023 season, but one will not be back, and it might surprise you. Also, we'll discuss the 10 USFL coaches that are heading to the XFL and bring you plenty in the speculation zone. This is the USFL Podcast. One, two, three. Oh! everyone into the latest edition of the USFL podcast episode 32 here Zach Kyleman in the hosting chair back after a not no kidding oversleeping an episode <laughs> I'll no explain curtains. in a second no curtains. I'll, I'll explain in a second with my with my co-host and buddy and partner in crime the ref himself uh hey I want to say thank you for <laughs> riding solo on our return two weeks ago I uh, I have a new <laughs> schedule at work I work nights I set an alarm that didn't matter. Uh, my body just said I need sleep. And so here I am. I'm glad to be back for my actual return to the show this time. Well, it's funny too. Cause we didn't even talk about this before we start recording, if we were going to talk about it or not, but I'm so glad that you did. Now it's funny though, because the night before we came back, we had an appearance on the XFL STL talk show. That's right. Which I thought was a blast and you called me out on making, trying to get you to reroute your trip to go get white castles, which I had totally forgotten about. And it's probably one of the funniest things I've asked somebody to do. So if you haven't watched that, go check them out on, I mean, they're on YouTube, they're on Facebook, they're mm -hmm. on everything. It was a fun, fun appearance from a couple weeks back, but I'm glad to have you back in the studio. I'm glad, I'm glad to be back in the studio. Right. Episode 32, we're rocking and rolling and, you know, kind of like we mentioned before, we took a little hiatus when we come back. It's probably not going to be every week. We'll gather some news, when, but when there's big news, we're coming in. We're coming in hot. But don't don't get it twisted, everyone. Once the season's closer, once the season's in motion, we're probably doing more than one episode a week. Let's just say that much. Mm -hmm. But absolutely, for now, absolutely. we have a slow drip, slow drips. Maybe it'll make you miss us more. I don't know. Yeah, it's so, slowly but surely we're getting stuff, you know, moving in that direction. And we've had a few things that have kind of shown up and or been clarified even compared to our last show. So we'll be diving into that and more um and along with a massive news piece that now is going to be added to the radar for off-season discussion moving forward uh before we jump in as you hear as you heard the tease we'll be getting into these topics but first a few housekeeping measures as always first off if you aren't following us on your social media hey come on join the conversation at usfl podcast on facebook instagram and twitter you never miss an episode post and you also keep up with us you know you know retweeting commenting discussing and putting down questions of the week for you guys on the twitter page so you definitely want to participate in those we do talk about those on the show so feel free to discuss that with us we'll drop the question of the week at the end of the show for next episode when we get towards the end also we are looking to have you join our subscriber base hey click the bell it builds morale and subscribe to our youtube page Trust me, this, we're also still looking to give away a jersey of your choice. Hit 5,000 subs, and that bad boy is yours for the taking. Just join on in if you haven't already. And hey, might as well before the 2023 season really kicks into gear. Like I said, we're just kind of, we're kind of following along with, emo with emotions and paces until we really hit the ground running with the league. So stay tuned with us and join along for the conversation. Now, let's dive in. For this conversation real quick you know speaking of jerseys speaking of jerseys our sponsors royal retros sent us mm -hmm. a little gift i sent you a little sneak peek zach it's it's gonna be in the mail soon i swear to you and when it is folks we're gonna show those bad boys off but i i, I don't i gotta wait till zach gets it so probably the next episode we're gonna be showing off some cool new royal retros gear and quite honestly, if you want to get some of that retro gear, USFL, XFL, World League of Football, you name it, they probably got mm -hmm. it. Save 10% with coupon code USFL podcast. Sorry. You know me. I got to hijack every segment, bro. Well, I'll be honest. I, I feel bad because I, I didn't even mention it because I was hoping the jersey would be here. Yeah, I know. Um, 
Yeah. That's it's, on it's me. It's snail mail. No, it's I snail mail. Oh, it's, snail mail. it's sitting on my chair, Zach. No curtains. <gasps> no oh. curtains. <laughs> oh, the scandal. You said you were mailing this. I said I was going to mail it, and I am going okay. to mail it. And I didn't say which Sunday. Oh, I, oh, I, no, I said tomorrow, didn't I? Oops. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll do no it. No worries. Zach, um, I, oh. I, I have two people that I know I am slacking on getting business cards out to, so I, I am... I am also under the radar for that as well. But hey, sooner the better. And yeah, no, I'll be wearing that thing as soon as the next episode comes up. Um, it's a player that I really, I you know, one of the players I've actually interviewed, by the way, and uh, one of my favorites in the league. So uh, keeping you guys posted on that. Let's dive into this conversation, shall we? So if you, if you, of course, you joined in the beginning, you know what we're going to be talking about. We're going to hit the ground running on this. Um, plenty of confirmation news, but one that was kind of a bombshell for the league. Some folks have been talking, okay, if we if the league doesn't come back with eight co- all eight of its coaches, it, which one leaves? Mm. You know, which one is the guy out? And you know, the the popular choice is Kirby was Kirby. Well, Wilson. that's who I'm the not, fans not, we can't out, sugarcoat. But I, you know, the league that might mm-hmm. be a different story. But anyway, right. I mean, look, we can't sugarcoat that. That was the pot, that was the fan opinion. Um funny enough, he is not. He is reconfirmed back for the season. In fact, seven of the USFL's mm-hmm. coaches are reconfirmed back via the USFL comms page, which finally yeah. shows life by Came the way. Came alive. Congrats. I couldn't believe it. Congrats. Lee. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I know because I have a uh, notification set up for all the USFL accounts on social media. So every time they tweet, I get a notification. It's like clicking the bell. I got morale so many times all over the place there. But when that one came through, I was like, whoa, that is, that's a, fir- I, I thought they had just, forgot about it quite honestly i had forgotten about it oh no i i think that one i mean the other one that we're waiting on and i'm hoping they use it this year is the usf on oh, yeah. account which is also sitting dormant but the comms page lives and it gave us a massive announcement of first off seven coaches confirmed back for sure it was it was it was kind of not uncertain but you know you want official mm-hmm. news the league dropped an official piece that is kind of a next extension to the to the off season moving into 2023 the one coach not coming back is the one is what is making the rounds the most. Larry Fedora of the New Orleans Breakers head coach has confirmed he will be stepping away from the USFL once his position has been filled after a hiring search for the New Orleans Breakers. Um, this was released in the press release US, that the USFL comms had tweeted out about the seven other coaches returning. Mm-hmm. Um, the simple truth, he wants to spend more family time. He is on the road a lot last year. Obviously it's not where it's not where his family's at. And if you're, if they're going to continue the hub format, kind of hard to do that. If you're having to have to do this travel situation, it's not for everyone. For sure. Is the truth. Well, and I mean, realistically, you can't be mad at somebody for wanting to be with their family. Um, the big takeaway here for me is it seems like he's open to returning to the league once they move into their yep. into their cities. But even more so, hey, man, seven of the eight coaches are coming back. Sure, we mentioned there might be some anxiety about Kirby Wilson, but I will be the first to say, especially in spring football and spring football leagues in general, I mean, well, maybe not. I don't know. We've not seen a season two in quite a bit. But we yeah. could see a drastic change. It could be a, a night and day situation yet there. So I would reserve judgments on that pick until the end of the season two. Uh, but, you know, the one name that I think there is probably the most speculation on is are they staying? Are they going was Jeff Fisher, because even in that last game of the season against the Maulers and the, uh, the Panthers, clearly the, the broadcast team had mentioned that it, maybe he was unsure if he was coming back. There are still some negotiations. So seeing this, hey, we got confirmation there. And I mean, furthermore. Uh, you know, we were discussing this before the show. I mean, this seems to confirm that when it comes to hubs next year, New Orleans probably isn't going to be one of those cities. Otherwise, you know, he probably would have probably would have stuck around. But I mean, the fact that he's open to coming back, sign him up. It's a shame. I mean, that's it's a stinger for the Breakers fan. They had a good team. There's a couple things that fell yeah. apart near the end of the season, but that was mainly due to injuries and like lingering injuries, uh, not just for uh, Sloter, but uh, kind of across the team. They were the number two team in the South. 
They uh, they went on to the playoffs where, I mean, they lost to the Stallions, but then the Stallions went on to win the championship. So maybe not the greatest moral victory, but a moral victory nonetheless. Uh, but you know what? Next year, they're going to have some a new coach behind the reins. Uh, USFLnewsroom.com, which you should be checking out daily. Uh, one of our new writers, Logan, New Orleans local, he put out, he actually put out a piece mm-hmm. earlier this week. His top top five picks. I, I'm curious if people go there, agree, disagree, leave a comment here or on the article. But like you mentioned, Zach, man, now we have some stuff to talk about in the off season. Who's coming in? Are we going to see one of the position coaches move up? Are we going to see um, somebody new come in? Gene Chizik? Who knows? That was the name last year. Remember? Gene Chizik. Right? It, it kind of it, it leaked that Gene Chizik signed in. Then Gene Chizik came and said, no, maybe. Maybe that's the guy. We'll see. Right? I don't know. If if I'm league continuity and everyone and the people are okay for these roles and they want to step up, I'm, I am I would honestly want Noel Mazzoni to take the mm-hmm. spot right right away. Um, keep, keep at least some semblance of at least the majority of the staff. I'm assuming – you would try to maintain the majority of that staff credit. It would be his team, his mm-hmm. roster to fill. He could do what he wants. He doesn't, you know, with any coaching decision in any level of the sport, it's not, it's not guaranteed anyone stays. Sure. So like say he was to come in, it's not guaranteed. He's going to keep everybody else on that staff if he wants to it, but look, if I'm the league, I think it's a pretty easy fill. And I thought, you know, Mazzoni did a great job offensively. Mm-hmm. You get someone that can execute or he runs the play still. And then you can keep everything together, keep your players that want to stay in that system mm-hmm. together that come back, you know, who are signing back on. So that that would be my obvious choice. Otherwise, I mean, there's there's a plethora of coaches out there looking for a next step, as we've seen uh, that, you know, I think that the USFL is going to do its due diligence in trying to fill that spot. Obviously, with the XFL now filling out its coaching mm-hmm. staffs, that makes things a little bit easier credit. We'll be talking in a second that even some teams are going to be finding new position oh, yeah. coaches pretty soon. Um, nonetheless, I, I'm with, I'm I'm on the Mazzoni train. Mm-hmm. I, I think you should ask him if he wants to do it. Just say, "All right, we got you the fill in right there." Bing, bang, boom! Someone that Larry Vidora can probably endorse just because of the close. Yeah. I mean, they were well knit with each other the last year, so why not? And it makes things very easy. Um, I think for the league to transition that way, you know, because he already would know what the league would want. I'd expect at that right, point. Right. 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 Yeah. No, I tend to agree with you. You know, there was another one on uh, Logan's list though, that did catch my eyes. Hal mummy, you know, Hal mummy, bring the dude in, you know, he, he's got another no offensive. He's guru. got no obligations going on right now, but I, I tend to agree. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of like the idea of, uh, I guess, promoting within, if that makes sense, or if that's applicable here, Um, because I mean, as coaches coming into the league, they're going to look at that too and say, well, shoot, you know, instead of getting someone else, they gave, they gave one of the existing coaches the opportunity to say, you know what, here's a team. It's your team to run. You build out the staff, you make it happen. Um, so you know what, I I would like to see it for a lot of other reasons, but that, that one would be a nice, a a good feel moment, if you will. Mm Mm-hmm. It would be, it would be, but I, I think how mummy is one that everyone's been talking about should have been in one of these leagues anyway. Um, I, I, I would not be upset at that either. Right. You know, one of the godfathers of the air raid offense coming to the USFL, um, would be a big, pretty good storyline to come with. And, you know, someone that, you know, was one, won the mega bowl in the TSL. So that connection was mm-hmm. there, you know, at least on Brian Woods, side of the equation. So if it, it would fit, you know, I, I don't mind either one of those mm-hmm. choices that we've li- listed, um, and you definitely should check out Logan's art, article about the other th- about the other candidates that would be on the list. Uh, recommend it for sure. Uh, I'm going to read off a few quotes just kind of on this, that, like some official stuff. Uh, Daryl Moose Johnston on the issue or, of uh, Coach Fedora leaving the USFL or stepping away to better represent. Mm-hmm. Uh, quote, we will miss Coach Fedora and we are grateful for his enormous contributions to help set up the New Orleans Breakers and the entire USFL for long-term success. Uh, another quote that was found via NOLA.com, so New Orleans, uh, what New Orleans local website, kind of like uh, mm-hmm. AL.com over in Alabama. Um, this is uh, kind of directly from Fedora on the situations we talked about with the family one. Quote, while I thoroughly enjoyed this season, starting up a new league and team kept me away from my family for an extended period of time. Quote, end quote. And then quote again, I can't ask them to make that sacrifice again. 
So I have decided to step away from the USFL for the time being. And he continues, I love coaching and I will certainly be open to the USFL return at some point in the future once all teams get settled in home cities. And, and this is this is something I think that, you know, it's the flip of the coin with the mm-hmm. hub. And some people, you know, there still is the frustration. People, some fans still, you know, they want to go see these sure. teams. But then you look at it and, you know, unless you are a Skip Holtz last year who gets to settle mm-hmm. in, you know, you are kind of on the road, oh, yeah. you know, and I, you, you are going to have to make some sacrifices that way, especially if it's family matters, mm-hmm. you know, um, I would say Larry definitely made, has made, I think a business decision here in terms of fan, in terms of family mm-hmm. time. And, you know, he's, he's been through the rings. He's been, he's had plenty of high profile positions in his college tenure. And along with this one, you know, he can take that time. So he is very free to do that. And I hope, and like I said, if, if, once they can get settled in, I would love to see him return. Maybe not, maybe he won't get the breakers mm-hmm. job back, but honestly, if like, say the league continues on with its su- supposed expansion that it would like to do in the years down the line, he'd be a great one to say, Hey, if you're still open to something and you haven't gotten an opportunity, we would love to have you slide on in and come back if that's possible. Um, so yeah. I, and plus, I mean, last year you couldn't ask for new Orleans and the fandom there they did a pretty solid job, even with a <laughs> would eventually become a banged up offense right. with Kyle Sloter. You know, he and, you know, he and his crew did an excellent job getting them to that six and four position and could have possibly with just a few different plays had their standing in the South even oh, changed. Sure. Oh yeah. 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 It's unfortunate too, because I've really dug the memes, right? The fedora, my breakers. Yeah, oh yeah. You can't do the, no more. My breakers. No more of this. Goodbye. Well, you know what? Goodbye it's, it's, it's no more. My breakers for now. But not no more my breakers forever. Hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> uh, rest, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Larry Fedora meme. Tips of the hat for now. <laughs> uh, it, it deserves a special sign yeah. off on it on social for us. It really yeah. does. <laughs> uh, so as we hinted, Larry is not the only one that has uh, had a shift from the USFL. As you know, there's another major league in town, and uh, with said other opportunities, you start getting competition, and, well, folks are heading, there are some folks heading over there for various reasons, as we will discuss. Let's get into the list, though. Ten USFL coaches from various differing positions are heading over to the XFL for the 2023 season. They are as follows. Bill Johnson, defensive line coach for Birmingham, he is heading to the Houston XFL team, uh, coached by Wade Phillips. Corey Chamberlain, defensive backs coach for those Stallions. He's heading over to San Antonio with Heinz Ward. Chris Dishman, he is going from New Jersey, the defensive coordinator for the Generals, by the way, heading to Las Vegas to be with Rod Woodson. Greg McMahon, special teams coordinator. He is moving from one Houston team to the other Houston team. Wade Phillips squad as well. Uh, John Heimbach, offensive line special teams coach for the Stallions. He is heading to Arlington to go with Bob Stoops. Mark Schneider, linebackers coach for the Gamblers, going over to Orlando to be with Terrell Buckley. Pat Pearls, offensive line coach for the Tampa Bay Bandits, heading to St. Louis to be with Anthony Becht. Paul Spicer, defensive line coach for the Breakers, heading to San Antonio to go with Heinz Ward. Tim Lewis, another Gamblers coach, heading over to Arlington as well uh, to be with Bob Stoops. He's going to be a co-defensive coordinator over there after being coordinator with the gamblers and Ty Warren defensive line coach for Houston as well. He is heading to the XFL, except he's going to Orlando 10 coaches, 10 different spots. And honestly, a lot of these guys, either they have connections Mm -hmm. with XFL teams from the past, or they've had connections with the head coaches themselves. There's only a select few that do not have either one that I could tell immediately, but most of these guys either have been in the XFL in some capacity Mm -hmm. in any of its three forms or they have been connected with these guys in some way, shape, or form, either playing or coaching. Groups. Right, right, right. And m- the one thing that does make me the saddest out of all of this, Houston got fleeced, man. We got fleeced, man. Yeah, they, they so many. Dude, what is going on now? Four. I'll say I'm not. I'm not too concerned of, with it. I mean, attrition happens everywhere. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to give somebody else an opportunity to come into the league. The real deal of this is, I mean, once once the XFL, if uh, pending, they go into a season two, you know, and I bet you some of those guys leave for the USFL. Realistically, that's it's going to be a circle of spring football life, potentially. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it all it plays be. out. Um, I mean, speculation zone. It seems like 
Seems like the XFL's throwing some money out there, and that's good. It's good. But I'll tell you, there Seth Lessons will be the first one to tell everyone. It is it, but he's right. It what? is a little what? concerning. A little concerning because they really need to like knock it out of the park, like on the first try with the amount of money they're spending. Sure. Right. That's how mm-hmm. I feel. I could be wrong. I want them to succeed. Let well, me no, just say I, that I, by I the think, way, too. I, I think some of it is connections. Some of it is and this is just me again. This is speculation. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. We're just talking. Top at this of my point head. Now. But I mean, some of it might be financial. You know, some of it might be the fact that you go to the cities. Mm-hmm. You know, keep in mind you get to settle down possibly for multiple years if this works out. Compared to, you know, you're still in the hub format. You're still moving around. You know, so that that's another factor. There's a few factors here. Um, something I did find one of the hirings interesting, and, and mainly it's for. Uh, big name, but also just the fact that, um, and I'm, we're going to talk a little XFL on this mm-hmm. side. They did announce their full staffs. If you look at the Arlington s- staff mm-hmm. list, it is massive. I don't think I have ever seen a, an example of a team using both co-offensive and <laughs> co-defensive <laughs> right. coordinators. Yeah. I, I, my eyes popped out. I was like, okay, I've seen co's for mm-hmm. one. But both, I was like, whoa, oh, this is a huge staff. You know, both the Hayes brothers coupled with, you know, Tim Lewis, who's going to be coaching with Jay. And from the looks of it, you know, I, I did a little research. I'm like, okay, what, you know, getting the benefit on code coordinators. I'm like, I got some guesses, but just double checking. And USA football had a great art, a great blog post about it going, you can have one guy coaching the secondary, one dude coaching the line. And if they have a decision to make on, in terms of how to play a play, then they have maybe a hierarchy they build where someone does the definitive play calling. So based on this, if you're talking like Arlington, for example, mm-hmm. Jay Hayes would be the D line coach or the front seven right. in that case. Tim Lewis would be more of the secondaries. It's based on their player. Right, background. right, right. So that's how that plays out. I find it fascinating though, because, like I said, the Arlington roster of coaching of their yep. coaching staff is huge, mm. and I mean, good for them. Like I, I, I'm, I'm, if you get your opportunity, great. I'm just like that's the only thing I was like, dang, I have never seen that big of a coaching staff in my life, but. You know, as we've seen with these philosophies of both these leagues, they're two different mm-hmm. ones. I, I, you just, just look at how, how each one presents itself and each one's path right now with what they want to do, you know, different ways of how they feel spring football will work and hold. And we're going to find that out within the next, I would say next five oh, years sure. at the max, right, right, right. At the very max, we'll find that out in the short term soon. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, th- that's that's the thing that does worry me about the XFL. It's a lot of money, and it could pay off. Honestly, it could pay off, but it could mm-hmm. it could shorten the lifespan as well, right? Um, I mean, we've never seen the XFL in a, a technical second season. I don't think you would count this as season two to the 2020 season, if anything, because seemingly some of the teams are going to change. I mean, some of them clearly are well, going to change. It's been three yeah, years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I mean, some of the coaches are the same, but then they've shifted around and I'll say this, I'll say this. If they don't name St. Louis, the battle Hawks, they've lost their mind. They've, they've gone mad. We'll see. We'll see. That's all I'll say. Sure. Um, I, I think that, I think that's going to happen. It's too much, too much noise outside of it. And even you got local guys, that have been told that, you know, it'd be, it'd be silly. You know, you know, that, that's all I can you know, say. I'm going to, you know, I heard a little rumor, a little birdie, a couple little birdies told me that the XFL is going after like smaller podcasts and websites. Now they, I mean, they have not approached me for any of the stuff that I do. Uh, but to me, okay. that seems strange that I, and you know what? No curtains. I'm always honest with my, uh, situation. I'll be, when I worked with the, in 2020 with those guys in the lead up to 2020, I mean, I never, I mean, I did talk to the lawyers once, but beyond that, we never had like an issue. We had a nice working open relationship. They appreciated like, Hey, look, somebody's talking about us. And man, it got me thinking like, man, I'm glad we didn't have to deal with that with the USFL. Cause I, I mean, realistically, right. let's be honest here. We did. I just chose the USFL podcast. If I mean, and hopefully they don't get any ideas here. And I'm sure somebody's listening. But I mean, if they wanted to be, have a problem with it, they probably have a good right to have a problem with it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, so you know what? That <laughs> makes me uh, a little a little disappointed. I'm glad that I, honestly I'm not doing an XFL podcast at the moment. 
but you and I both have a lot of friends that do it. So I hope there's not, I hope it's a misunderstanding. That's all I'll say. Right. And by the way, if you are going to listen to an XFL one, say you're, you're like mega fans, like mm-hmm. we are just spring football, uh, our, our guy, Mike over there, let's talk XFL. Just go check, just go give him a sub, go follow him. Like that guy does a great job. You know, and is in our wheelhouse recommended. You know, you got Pro Football Alliance, XFL St. Louis. I mean, there's plenty yeah. of options for you people out there too. Um, but look, all I'm going to say with the XF, XFL for this final note is, you know, it is to me the the two philosophies are you have one. The USFL is more the utilitarian option. It's look, it's football. We have this long term ish plan that they want to do. They believe that you know certain. Items can be controlled until they are able to then have access fru- fru- frugally mm-hmm. that way to then, you know, pump up more. The XFL I see as we want to have a pop out of the gate. We want to have everything right in your face um, to grab your attention. Right. And we'll find out how that goes. You know, and I think that was, you know, the USFL has that one year extra. I don't know what that means for this coming spring. Mm-hmm. All I know is that we have two leagues that are going to be competing against each other. And this is what we've been seeing so far. You know, we got one with the contracts we talked about, mm-hmm. how one's paying more than the other. But we're going to be having that discussion as, you know, union negotiations are going yeah. to be coming up here pretty soon. So that's going to be a whole new factor for the USFL is that whole section of this of their this mm-hmm. league itself. You have coaching changes like we're seeing right now, which I do want to bring up this question on here. And I have... To me, two of them make the most sense, but the one, but I have one that I'm going to stick here with. Um, who's the out of the assistants in this list? I mean, we, or at least coordinators, mm. you know, different sections or special specialty mm. coaching positions. Who, wh- which one hurt? Which one hurts the most for the league itself, or just a team? Uh, you know, it, it, there's two that kind of stick out to me right away. There's uh, John Hambach, Hambach, sorry. Uh, and Tim Lewis, right? I mean, just there's a, Mm -hmm. there's the name factor. I mean, Houston's defense was pretty dang solid. And I mean, from, uh, him box perspective, I mean, Birmingham won the flipping championship, uh, but he's one that has, I mean, a little bit of history with the XFL. If I recall, he's been in, I will be now in all three iterations. So if I, if I recall correctly, I, I hope I'm not wrong about that. Um, but either way, I mean, I know he was, he's been associated with with them in the past, so it kind of makes sense, but I think those hurt, um, especially like a championship team. You're going to want to, you know, you clearly you want to, you're going to want to keep as much of that winning formula as possible, uh, going into that second season. Are these roles impossible to fill? Not at all. Um, so like I said, I'm not, I'm not too concerned. I kind of expected some attrition, uh, especially mm-hmm. with the new league coming around, I, I feel like it's inevitable that one's going to leave for another. And uh, like I said, uh, pending the XFL goes to season two, which again, I think they will. Uh, yeah. I think we'll see even more switching around. Maybe some guys go from the USFL to the XFL again, but maybe we see some guys going from the XFL to the NFL or NFL. Sorry. Uh, well, we'll see that probably too, but the USFL. Right. Um, and I mean, more interesting is like the players, right? Once you get in a couple seasons, I'm sure at some point we're going to start seeing some of these guys uh, maybe get persuaded over after having like a championship run in one of the other leagues where, you know, Hey, maybe Fedora is coming back, tipping that hat right into new Orleans. And he says, man, you know what? There might be the competition, but I really like that player contracts coming up. Let's let's bring you over here to the bay, right? So yeah, who knows? It, it, that, that distant future does loom because once for me, for many of these US phones, year two ends, it is complete free agency. Mm-hmm. So you know that will be in play come twenty twenty four, which makes this way more fascinating. I, I do I do think we should know. We do find this, you know, it's very it's very much something that we're intrigued to see happen from it, it just as perspective of okay, this is. We don't get, we have never seen this much competition in this space. Mm-hmm. So I think that part, you know, whether you are a USFL media guy or an XFL media guy, like that is fascinating in its own right. Especially, hey, and if you're a CFL person that's like sitting behind the scenes watching from afar going, well, we've been around the longest, but hey, there's these two leagues mm-hmm. and, you know, we now it's American talent. Like that's fascinating to me. I, th- that's not, there's no statements here on like favoritism. I just want to say, I find this I find this very, very much this cotton and mouse game of what will be played out entertaining. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I, the, the next few years will be very entertaining from a kind of competitive standpoint. 
is all I can tell you. Yeah, no, it, it well, it's going to be fun to play out. Uh, until then, though, you know what we can do? Because there's, I mean, we had uh, in the last episode uh, before we came back, we had Robert Morris, Houston Gamblers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a little interview with them, so you may not have made the episode, but you, 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 you were there in returning with kind of a nice big interview, but. There was a little bit of maybe some confusion, maybe some speculation. So I think that leads us, Zach. Let's jump in to the speculation zone. Welcoming into the speculation zone. We're going to be bringing all our thoughts on, hey, what may or may not happen? <laughs> you know, look, there's a lot of stuff with the off season. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things we're still waiting and trying to predict. And there could be some things. That just makes sense. It's a speculation zone, everybody. Mm-hmm. Welcoming you on aboard. And the first question of the speculation zone, as we were talking about, it deals with our conversation with Robert Morris that we had on the last episode. There was a line in that sh- in that show, in that interview, about the draft. And uh, it was going along the lines of that there won't be a draft. And it led to some confusion. Um, my, our good buddy uh, Pocket Ace is over at the USFL Network, which, by the way, those guys have been getting a lot of work. Well, in. Let's, um, I don't think I talked about this on the last episode. Let's give the dudes some props. I, they're the what? The USFL Fan Network now yes. working on the official USFL Discord. So USFL community, round of applause for everybody that says the USFL doesn't work with the community. Take that. Sign them up. So, I mean... I'm right. all, I'm happy about it. I think it's cool. Oh no, they dude, massive props to them. They've been putting out a lot of content, mm. um, and on that discord server, which by the way, you check that out too. You know, you, you'll find a link anywhere on, on there, or we'll be free to drop it if you ask, but nonetheless, um, ACE has been doing a lot of discussion pieces with the gambler side of things. He's kind of their correspondent, their main guy, but he's also been doing a lot of, a lot of digging for the league and a lot of league news too. And he also got a chance to talk with Robert Morris and Robert got to clarify a little bit on the draft side of things. Uh, and then it was clarified by a, so here's a few tweets that I want to bring up that he discussed, uh, kind of clarifying our interview. Um, basically what is being discussed by league sources and this is per ace per his sources, um, is that the use of L is having a draft. So that was, I was confused by that when that happened, by the way, I'm glad that's reconfirmed. Um, until then it is open free agency. Uh, right now they're trying to target earlier or closer to the season mm. for the draft. That, that is the, that is the, that is what's going on. Right. At least according to ACES sources, which so I feel is fascinating. Yeah, I mean, you know what though? It makes it fun, but speculation wise, right? So like, okay, we talked about the draft. It seems like it, I would guess if I were to guess when we're going to see it, Probably a, probably the same time we saw it last year is my quick guess, but it kind of leads me down a path of, all right, well, when, when is like the big surge of USFL news coming? I mean, when we look back at the lead up, right, there was, I mean, going into October, I'll say it was kind of radio silence, October, the little drip started November, the ball started forming December. It got a little bit bigger. But man, when we, once we got to January, it was like, boom, 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 boom. We're getting new promos. We're getting coaches, staff members, draft information. It was like every day we're getting new information. And so again, speculating on maybe not when we'll hear about the draft, but maybe some of these other pieces, maybe the replacement for the coach. I feel like that October, November is, I would almost fall in that same pattern where let's do the slow build again. It gives you... You don't want all of your big announcements going out when the XFL is trying to build up to their season. But at the True. same time, you don't want people to forget about you and, and lose your presence in there, which I will say, I appreciate the USFL social accounts are still active. I mean, not as active as they were during the season, but I mean, why would they be right? They get, they're getting out at least uh, close to a tweet mm-hmm. a day right now. Sometimes so more, they're, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, poor, they're trying to get a constant you know, content stream, eventually that's going to have to change <coughs> as, as we talk, mm-hmm. you can only have so much recycled content before some people are going to want more goods. Right. Um, and I, I'm thinking, yeah, much like last year. I mean, look, a little difference is you're going to have plenty of people signing back this time mm-hmm. around. At least that's what it's sounding like is you're going to have guys left and right coming back here. So the issue is not about, I mean, the draft is going to be there 
but it sounded more like you're getting signings down. You're going to have a draft maybe to supplement or just to lock some people down later on that you didn't, that maybe you don't think they're going to be in the NFL draft come April and away you right. go. Um, I think you can't wait until November to say your next piece of the puzzle. Right. I think you got to, I mean, I say the end of October, but I also am going to jokingly say by Halloween, you need to have something more out mm-hmm. there. Uh, there's going to be trickle down announcements of signings via USFL fan network or whoever else lets out their signing information. If from player agencies, but the league I think does need to at least put out some sort of announcement within the next month and a half. Well, and I mean, there's a couple uh, is what I'm, there's a couple, e- maybe not easy ones, but there's a couple that come to my mind, but these are the big ones. So I figure like they'll probably wait a little bit longer, but like we mentioned, when is the draft happening? But the big ones, who's replacing Larry Fedora. And I think the biggest one, the hubs, where are they going? Where, like, where is it two hubs? Is it four hubs? And where are the hubs? I think that's the thing <laughs> that people are dying to hear. You know, on the XFL side, it's like team names and logos. People are like, where are they? Me, I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I can't. I don't expect it to be Houston, but every day I, I roll a, a few dice. I'm going all in. Yeah. I push a few chips on my table just for good luck. That come on, baby, come on. Oh man. I mean, spe- like speculation's own piece here, but like Larry Fedora, like we're talking him going home makes, again, it makes, like you're saying, it makes you wonder, you know, New Orleans is out of the mm-hmm. running at this point, if for any hub situation. So then, okay, you know, there were two scenarios that were popped up, four hubs or mm-hmm. two. Two seems more and more likely, yeah. I want to say, maybe I'm crazy, but it seems like the four conversations kind of been dropped from a lot well, of this. Uh- so, on that note, okay. real quick, and this is, and maybe it's even me, and maybe it's us because we are so into this. But I, at this point, I've just accepted it's two, for the fact of if it's four, I will be ecstatic. I will be ecstatic it, rather than if I expect four and it's two. I'm like, oh, I kind of expected that. So I'm just going with it's two again. Speculation zone. We don't know that. It's a good thing we're in the speculation zone right now. But sorry to cut you off. I just had to That's throw that thought in there. Go on. <laughs> That's that's what this is for, though. We get to have a little fun with this. Oh, yeah. it, is all it is. So, look, I, I'm just thinking it's two at this point. I think that they want to, you know, they want to keep building it, but they also want to get a little more fan engagement out there. Um, and you know what? I still, me as a, the Panthers fan and the fan base reaction from what I saw says I want it to be Detroit. Mm-hmm. But I think even more and more, I just look at the location and I go, who I, I feel like maybe Philly and New Jersey is the play. Right. And, and that's that the only I just say that because you have Philadelphia and, and well, I will say New York mm-hmm. because New, they say New Jersey, but it's really the New York market. They're so close right. that, that, that it's a melting pot. The tri-state area, you can get so many people together in a Metro market to go into games. That's a two for one deal right Mm -hmm. there. And if NBC is wanting, that was their main request is we want more fan interaction in the stands. That's, I think your best bet to open Mm -hmm. it up. Uh, as much as I would love to say, Oh great. I can drive four and a half hours to Detroit and I can hit a game every weekend or something like that, which some people are probably saying you're crazy. I'm probably saying, no, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> straight up, that, no that joke. Is something I was going to do, <laughs> you know, no joke, Zach, my parents live in Illinois. I might just go live with them for the season. If it is in Detroit, so I could, cause it's like a, it's like a five hour drive, but you know, it's, That's it's a bad. little bit shorter than I don't what 20 hours from where I'm at now or something. Right. Yes. So, yes. So yeah, I'm, I'm holding out, but like the more I talk with people and the more you like think about it, you're like, that seems to fit the bill more and Philadelphia. Also their fans showed out pretty well for the playoffs and for the championship. I felt they did, you know, I thought there was a decent amount of stars mm-hmm. fans there oh, yeah. for what I was not expecting. So shoot that might, to me, that's just two for one deal. You get three of the eight teams that are in market. Pittsburgh's not terribly far down the road. You know, you still get new Orleans. It's kind of down the mm-hmm. road as well from stallion. So then you can in theory, maybe pull some more, and then they continue to try and build it up to year right. three. You know, so I don't know. I just don't see four 
speculation zone piece, I don't think four is likely anymore. They've, they've kind of quieted it down on the conversation. Let front. me throw a wacky one at you. Three hubs. Any possibility? Three. I mean, realistically, if they're still, they still have to travel, right? Because if there's, t- unless, they, sure. unless they do spring league style where they had the North and the South only played each other until the playoffs, which I'll be honest, I really hope they don't do. Yeah, I, I, I think you get a lot of backlash yeah. if you did that. They're going to play traditional and have them fly mm-hmm. out is what I think will happen. But three, so where's the third? Do you plant it in Pittsburgh? Do you put it in Canton? Do, do you? And, uh, I was wondering. I think, I was and wondering. you know what, though? I think here's the thing, because, you know, I had mentioned Canton not too long ago on where I thought I, I, I could see the hub being in Canton. I could just see it happening. It, that, I think, could get a little bit of blowback from just – Fans in general, I think the the normies that just watch football on TV won't really care as much. Uh, I mean, the fans and stands people do do talk about. So anyway, yeah. But if it's a third hub, it's a third hub where maybe you have Birmingham and, like you mentioned, maybe Jersey, maybe uh, Philly, right? Maybe even Detroit, and then you have that you have Canton, which kind of serves as like this the 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 hub for your spoke to the rest of the you, wheel right you know what that actually that's funny you say that because that makes me think of like almost like arlington with the xfl mm-hmm. because everything you know whether it's talking with you know daryl when i've had when I, when I went and had a chance to chat with him more you know listening to them talk mm-hmm. about canton ohio they they like it they like the setup and it played out really well for the playoffs. You know, it is the Hall of Fame. In the summertime, if you don't have football mm-hmm. going, if you don't have football going on, you know, maybe it's a little extra tension. It's a little more bringing economy boost to that section of the country, which, hey, that's an advertising piece for the league is, look, Birmingham, look what we did down yep. here. You know, we had people travel from around the country to come down here, you know, Folks in the local area said that it did boost economy and a bunch and bunch more was going on around the stadium down by protective. Maybe we give Tom Benson a little mm-hmm. more and along with Canton, Ohio, and maybe even Cleveland because Cleveland's only an hour or so. It's barely an hour plus mm-hmm. up north of Canton. That metro area gets a bit more business. And, so, and check this out, man. So people would say, well, there's no local team, right? But where where are football fans going? I mean, yeah, it's not going to be like you're the average attendance of the Pro Football Hall of Fame probably doesn't max out a, the stadium a, a, on a daily. But I bet you, man, you throw a promotion in there where hey, a ticket to the Hall of Fame gets you to the ticket to the game tonight. People are already traveling out there to go see something football related. Maybe they don't even know about the USFL. Local people, I'm telling you, the people in Canton, I bet you they just dig to see some football just from the history behind it in itself from like, hey, we're the birthplace of football. There's some football going in. Yeah, it's not a local team, but hey, it, you know what? We went to the playoffs last year and that was fun. Or we went to the yeah. championship and holy smokes, what a game. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to buy season tickets or whatever it may be, right? So I get, I think if, with the thir- if it's a third hub, I think people could dig it. And it, here's the cool thing about it is it could almost serve like its own special feeling of like, you know what? A rivalry game, no home field, right? Maybe one of your rival we, rivalries plays in like, uh, you know, throw Pittsburgh and Michigan in there or something like that, that right. Sure. The bottom, the, the, the garbage dweller battle beef from last year. Throwing or battle you know, beef, you say whatever. <laughs> um, I mean, there, there, I feel like there's there's a way you could swing this into a winning opportunity to where even people that were looking as Canton as a negative would look at it and say, well, you know what? That's kind of cool, actually. It's kind of cool and it makes sense, right? And making yeah. sense makes dollars. So let's be honest here. So, yeah, no joke, no joke. You know, gotta gotta keep building upon those uh profits that you made last mm-hmm. season. Oh, yeah. Know? So, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying there. And yeah, like they're going to be, if inevitably they were going to get more costs cause they were going to expand, expand it too. If they do three, you know, they already have that and they bring the infrastructure to Canton. They don't got to worry about as much, you know, I mean, I guess it depends mostly on the networks on if they feel like they are okay with putting out that extra cost to have the camera crews ready, 
do games out there, you know, and then every week you'd essentially have one team that play one, one stadium that does two games where one gets each and gets one. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Um, that would be fun. Uh, and great if they did do a third, we'll find yeah. out. Um, I think though, like I said, if, at, at the very minimum, I'm I'm starting to lean more and more that Philadelphia slash New Jersey, that metro area is going to get that mm-hmm. hub because of the two for one package you get in that section of right the U.S. Right, right. So well, yeah, that, that's that's the main thing I'm taking away from this. And for now, <laughs> it's just speculation, but hopefully soon we'll have all the deets. We'll see by uh, by Halloween. Yes, let's hope. Let's hope. Otherwise, I'll be scared for two reasons. <laughs> no, you know, honestly, I don't. Th- I don't even know if we'll hear it by Halloween, but I won't be too worried. I, if anything, I think we'll probably. When did we learn about Birmingham? Like officially learn about Birmingham? That was like around the draft, uh, right? Or I guess it was a little bit before because they had the draft. Uh, I there. thought it was like I thought it was at least January yeah. that we got it all sorted out. I, so I mean, yeah, you could. Hmm. I'm just hoping, and I think a lot of people do too. You know, they have things in order now. They have people. They got to staff up a little, possibly, um, that they have it earlier, I guess, so that you can then drum it up a little more of a runtime. Because, I mean, think about it still. I think this is what's crazy about last season that you almost forget about the beginning of that Mm -hmm. year is that they did this within a half a year. Oh, yeah. They they said, yeah, we're, we're going to make this happen, and they made it happen, and the football product by the end, you know, over a million and a half people watch the championship yep. and you know it turned out to end with a bang so that's where like great build on that you have more you have a runway and infrastructure in place mm. so that's why i'm kind of also hoping like maybe not halloween i'm not saying that's the best like i'm hoping by halloween realistically by the end of this year i think i want to hear that right news. you know it give at least three months runway to, to prep that up, get into that hub mm-hmm. or hubs or the extra hub hubs yep. and, you know, do your marketing. That's what I want to see. We'll see. I'm excited though. Off season mm-hmm. fun, man. Good times. Great times. Indeed folks, before we go here, as we were saying, we got the question of the, uh, of the week. Well, or the episode mm-hmm. as we're going to be doing again, a little, until things kick into gear i would say at least every two weeks you can expect the show right now uh here's you here's our question and hey if, he, if they beat us to the punch before we get to answer mm. it we'll find out who is your top choice to replace larry fedora we'll be posting that on our twitter at usfl podcast after this show premieres so be prepared to drop your answers accordingly and we'll try and uh, get to the top ones as need i bet a lot of them are going to be mentioned either from the top five mm. article or as we talked about on this show. Um, also, folks, thanks for tuning in and sticking with us. I'm glad to be back on. I'm glad to have you back, Zach, man. It's lonely. <laughs> I was telling you before, man, it's been a long time since I had to record alone, and I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> it it's it's better with it's better when friends are oh, together. Yeah. That's all I can tell. It's better when you got buds on a show that get to talk about something they for enjoy, sure. which is the United States Football League. Raise the roof. Let's baby. get signed up. Oh, yeah. Yes. Way oh, back. Yeah. 32 episodes in, in and business. we're still having a blast, man. I mean, <laughs> it better never change. I'll tell you. It'll be a sad <laughs> day. Oh, man. Folks, before we go, just to reiterate again, you want to follow us along on social media at USFL Podcast is where you can find us, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, be sure to go over to our YouTube page at USFL Podcast there. Subscribe to us and click the bell. It builds morale for you, me, and the ref as well so that we get to drop more videos for more people like you than enjoy leagues just like this one. Also, everybody, again, when you subscribe, you're entered into that five into that 5,000 sub jersey giveaway, custom jersey of your choice from the USFL shop that is yours. Once we reach 5,000 subs, we'll get to draw that. So, hey, sooner the better, and you get to walk home with one as well. And also, shout out once again. I didn't get to say it at the beginning, so I will. Shout out again to Royal Retros. I can't wait to get that jersey. I'm not going to spoil the name of who I have. I almost did. Won't yeah. do it. But I am looking forward to repping that bad boy, hopefully by next show. So uh, shout out to those guys over there. Use code USFL Podcast for 10% off your order at royalretros.com, where you can get USFL, Retro XFL, 
W L A F, whatever you want. That's old school. That looks new school. Head over to our retros.com to get your fit and your flex until next time, everybody. I, I am Zach Kyle. And this is the ref saying so long, catch you on the next one for episode 33. Stay tuned, everybody. 